Hello, in this video I'm going to explain a well-known technique to solve motion planning problems in robotics that can be used in mobile robots but also in robots with higher degrees of freedom. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to introduce the classic concept of potential field methods. I will explain how to compute different types of attractive potential functions and repulsive potential functions. In addition to this, I will also explain how to control a robot based on the gradient of the potential field. Finally, I will address situations that typically produce local minima and other common problems of this technique, and some solutions will be proposed. The main idea behind potential field techniques is very simple, indeed very simple, but at the same time it offers a wide range of possibilities. A potential function is defined by two functions, the attractive and the repulsive ones. The attractive potential function depends on the robot and goal configurations, while the repulsive function depends on the robot and obstacle configurations. The functions are designed in such a way that the robot will be attracted to the goal and will move away from obstacles as if it were a ball under a gravitational field that seeks minimum energy, energy configuration. An attractive function must have its minimum in the goal configuration. Typically, we use quadratic or conic functions. The quadratic function can take a very high values when the robot is far from the goal, but at the same time is smooth in the vicinity of the goal. While the conic function is proportional to the distance between the robot and the goal, however, in the vicinity of the goal, it changes abruptly, having a first order discontinuity. So, the conical parabolic function combines the two previous ideas, uh, so inside behaves parab parabolically, that is, it depends quadratically with the distance, while outside it behaves conically, that is, depends linearly with the distance. In this case, the parameters that define the function are, on the one hand, the distance at which a function changes from conic to parabolic, and on the other hand, the constant of the parabolic function, for instance. The repulsive function is defined by two distances. The first is a distance that, beyond that distance, the function has no influence on the robot, and second, a minimum safety distance to avoid the obstacle. On the other hand, the parameter epsilon r modifies how this repulsive function affects the robot. So combining both potentials, we can build a total potential function. Note that computer this potential function only requires distances to the goal and obstacle configurations. This can be done very easy if a map is available, but also considering sensor information. Thus, this technique can be implemented as a state feedback control law with a known environment or as a sensor-based navigation method. It can be used for global or local path planning. So, to plan a route, we must follow the opposite direction of a gradient, because the gradient is a vector whose magnitude and direction will depend on the robot configuration, but also on the goal and obstacles. And luckily, the negative gradient will point in the direction that minimizes the potential function. Therefore, to implement the potential field technique, we need to compute the gradient of the potential function. This gradient can be seen as a force that pushes the robot. In this case, the robot's own dynamic will act as a filter, and this type of control generally is smooth, although it might have certain uh, or some oscillations if friction is not included in a dynamic model of the robot. Another common alternative is to establish a speed control so that the speed is proportional to the gradient. In this case, is most common implementation is the steepest descent method that uses the unitary gradient vector and a step size that controls uh, the, the, how much uh, the robot uh, moves from one iteration to another one with the lambda parameter. The attractive function has a single global minimum in the goal configuration. However, when combined with the repulsive function, local minima might appear in, given, uh, in some configurations that 
might be difficult to predict if the whole configuration space is not fully analyzed. This happens in configurations where the gradient becomes zero, and as a consequence of the balance between the attractive and the repulsive forces. The figure shows uh, that there are uh, some initial configurations from which the robot will not be able to reach the goal configuration. Local minima are equilibrium points. Points. However, we uh, can escape from such equilibrium points by adding some kind of energy, such as a little push to one side or another, that might be enough to be able to reach the goal configuration. In this sense, there are some approaches that try to exert virtual forces in perpendicular directions to the repulsive force, uh, or establish some uh, random movements if the robot gets trapped in a local minimum. Here we observe what happens if we apply a small perpendicular force uh, whose magnitude increases if we detect that the robot uh, is moving slowly and we are still far from the goal. A classic problem that arises with this technique is facing, for instance, U-shaped geometries, which will inevitably cause that the robot gets trapped in a local minimum. In addition to this, the technique will generally present oscillation problems if the step size is too large. And similarly, in environments with, that are crowded with obstacles, the repulsive forces can be significantly higher than the attractive one, which can cause the robot not to pass between obstacles even if physically could be possible. In this video, I have explained a well-known motion planning technique known as potential fields. Thank you very much.